To catch a real killer, Jenny needed her detective gear. But that was at home, across town and swarming with police. It wasn't wise to travel through town after curfew. To avoid being caught, she'd have to find another way home. Excellent, thought Jenny. Time to exercise my sneaking muscles. Jenny paused at the edge of the roof, her teeth chattering in the chill wind. Below her, Lake Nowhere glowed eerily in the darkness. From this vantage point, she could see all the way to the lighthouse at the center of the lake. Only the wealthiest families in Arthurton could afford such spectacular views. If I cross the lake, it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest to my house. But navigating the lake at night was not an easy task. Many accomplished sailors had met their doom on the ragged rocks of Bear Claw Bend. Well, I've already worked out a way across. Time to get off this roof before someone spots me. Damn it! Think fast, Jenny! And just like that, Jenny was gone. Her first great adventure cut short before it had begun. Uh, I'm right here. Just hanging around. the way to Main Street. I can't risk being caught by the sheriff or his goons. The safest way home is across the lake.
What's that sound? True believer, I am the one you seek. I swim in the shadows of giants that stir beneath an eerie silence. Follow the path, reach the truth. What a curious and cryptic message. Was it meant for her? And who had written it? Friend or foe? This could be from the killer! But it was far too dangerous to find out. I have to find out. And so she decided to ignore the message and carry on to her house. There's no way I'm ignoring the case of the mysterious message. SS Susie. A gift from Susie's father as a thank you for preparing his lunch one day. This'll get me across the lake in no time. Unfortunately, the boat didn't belong to her. I'll just borrow it for a couple of hours. They won't even notice it's gone. But borrowing something without asking first was just stealing. It's always easier to ask for forgiveness than wait for permission. Of course, the boat needed a key. Jeez. Nobody trusts anyone these days. There must be some other way to start the engine. Wire the boat if I get this panel off. Risk of electric shock. It was far too dangerous. I love danger. at the last moment by a rusty screw. Oh well, time to turn back. There's only one screw left. I can just pry the panel back. And so she very carefully pulled on the panel. Wow, looks complicated. Far too complicated for a child to even attempt. Mom always says, a great detective focuses on the solution, not the problem. It looks like I can bypass the ignition by turning the dials until all the lights are illuminated. Piece of cake. Jenny had found a way to cross the lake, but she was still a long way from home. She pulled out her journal and plotted a course. First, I'll navigate my way around Skull Island. Next, I'll sail up the river to the Almasdan Bridge. Then it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest. And finally, home.
Got it. Let's go. Jenny had never crossed the lake after dark. Come to think of it, she'd never even driven a boat before. She thrust the throttle forward and felt a cool wind whip through her hair. Sneaking around after curfew had its benefits. Swim in the shadows of giants. This must be the place. Whoa, that was huge. 
huge. I have to get a closer look. The elusive red herring, a rare and fantastic sight. Can't believe they really exist. Jenny had always believed they were a fisherman's tale, but seeing them firsthand. She's so beautiful. But what was stuck in her scales? Message in a bottle. Curious. <laughs> I am the voice of reason. I walk amongst the sunken ships that once sailed through the glowing mist. It's another clue. This case just got more dangerous. Jetty had no idea who was behind these messages. This could be an elaborate trap. Or it could be the answer I need to prove my mom's innocence. The best course of action was to go back and get help from an adult. No, I have to see where this leads. On my own. Sunken ships, glowing mist. That should be easy to spot. Thanks, fishies!
can't see a thing. I must be heading in the right direction. Jenny navigated carefully through the thick fog. Oh, it smells like rotten fish. Many ships had lost their bearings here, grounded on the ragged rocks, swallowed by the lake. Maybe I could shed some light on these ghost ships. This is starting to feel like a wild goose chase. I am the hope in darkness. I sit in a spiral of ancient stone. Against the clock, I move alone. What's with all these cryptic messages? And where are they leading? I should get out of here before I turn into a ghost. this spiral of ancient stone. Skull Island, home to an abandoned lighthouse, and an excellent sandwich shop. 
decommissioned over a hundred years ago, but the light mysteriously continued to illuminate the darkness. Night grew dark and eerie. Why do I feel like I'm being watched? Ah! <laughs> well, aren't you ominous? Shoot! Shoot! Ah! Seriously, get off the light! Ah! Ah! And watch your language! Ow! Ah! How rude! About a murder of crows. It threw a rock at me. That was not a rock. It was a crab. to the unasked question. I stand inside the crescent moon. Below death's gaze, I wait for you. 
I wait for you. This could be the last clue. So caught up in unraveling the mystery, Jenny failed to recognize how dangerous this chase really was. Who is waiting at the Crescent Moon? Whoever it was, our intrepid detective would need to be extremely careful. Crescent Moon, below Death's Gaze. Time to wrap up this case. Hello? Uh, who's there? St stay right there! Don't come any closer! Identify yourself! Wh whoever you are, the police are right behind me! And they're very angry. But I might be able to help you if you just talk to me.
Okay, if you won't cooperate, I'll... I'll have to come over there. Oh, it was just my imagination. Thank God. The dog's my blood is before the dog! The dogs bark loudest before the dawn. CJ? The dogs bark loudest before the dawn. The early bird can't catch the lazy worm. The wind blows strongly from the east. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. Phoenix sky is full of fireflies. The last donut is the tastiest. Excellent! They haven't broken you yet! The notes were from you? I thought you were the Dean's killer! Why did you make me go through all that if you were already in the boat? This is the only place safe from their prying ears. We have to hurry. This line isn't secure. Line? We're talking in person. Exactly. Now quickly, before they get a fix on our location. What did you want to tell me? Seriously? You can't keep doing this. You contacted me. Did I? Actually, I'm glad you did. I need to ask you a few questions about the Dean's death. Good, Jenny. Question everything. Trust no one. your compass. Before it was wandering, but now it seems to be pointing in one direction. Exactly. Do you see now? It's not a compass at all. So what is it then? Aliens! Aliens? What are you talking about? E.T. Extraterrestrials. Beings from another world. I know what aliens are. Come on, CJ. There's no such thing. What? No. Not you too. I'm sorry, CJ, but it's time to get serious. The Dean is dead and my mom's in jail, framed for a murder she didn't commit. I need to get to the truth. The only way to truly see is to open your mind. Not everything is what it seems. If there really are aliens in Arthurton, how come you're the only person who's ever seen them? People don't see what they aren't looking for. That's why I come here every night, to observe the unobservable. The compass is my eyes. It can sense their presence where I cannot. Why don't you borrow it and find out for yourself? Okay, I'll take it. I need all the help I can get. Good. You can prove my theory to be fact. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just remember, when the needle is steady, the phenomena are near. Sure. They were here before. They will return. And we'll be waiting for them. Uh-huh. Yep. Totally. the library the day Dean Strasbury died. Did you notice anything unusual? Yes, I did! Great. What happened? They changed the bathroom scent from strawberry to pie! It was most unpleasant. Oh, is that all? I intended to alert the librarian as a matter of urgency. But no one was at the front desk. Quite unusual. Was there anyone else in the library? No, uh, just the Dean and I. Until I, uh, I, uh... Until you left. It's not like you to leave your research lying around. Why were you in such a hurry? I, uh, I lost track of time. I was late. For an appointment! An appointment? Where? Appointment? What are you talking about? You said you were late for an appointment. Objection! Leading the witness! This isn't a trial, CJ. It's just me, Jenny. 
Then I have nothing further to say, Your Honor. Hmm. There's something you're not telling me. Is there? look familiar. I found your map of Arthurton in the library. Keep it. It's a great map. Very rare. Ripped it straight out of the town charter. First edition. Come to think of it, only edition. What about all your notes? Don't you need them? Nope. Got it all backed up in the cloud. What cloud? Did I say cloud? I meant head. So what do all those notes mean? Who are the Shadow Men? Yes! You're starting to see differently! There are patterns everywhere! Keep searching! To your eye. Did you get in a fight? Wasn't a fight. More of a misunderstanding, really. A seriously purple misunderstanding? Well, you should see the other guy. CJ, this is serious. You have to tell me the truth. I had to do it, Jenny. I needed to learn. CJ, is this a confession? Well, you were going to find out anyway. CJ, did you murder Dean Strasbury? The Dean? Oh, no. But you just said... Good, Jenny. Suspect everyone. Even me. I don't understand. In fact, I suspected myself for quite some time. But I couldn't have done it. I want to believe you, CJ, but do you have an alibi? That's why I left these notes for you. If anyone can prove I'm innocent, it's you, Jenny LeClue. Hang on a second. Let me take a look at that. Jenny, I need your help. You know, we could have saved a lot of time if you'd just given me this message first. Risk being followed? Never! But what had piqued Jenny's interest was not the message itself. That paper. What did he write all these messages on? You wrote all these messages in a piece of newspaper. Jenny couldn't help it. Every time she thought about coffee, she saw Keith's face. She heard his voice. She remembered his sadness. And she promised not to rest until she'd uncovered the truth of his father's death. the day of the Dean's murder. The front page was missing, but even this small snippet worried Jenny. They've been peddling lies about my mom right from the start. Sheriff Winston the Clue has distanced himself from all proceedings. Well, if he won't help her, I will.
This photo was taken in Avocado Heights. That's on the other side of town, miles from the library. Three fifty five. Clearly the afternoon. CJ was always protesting something. The first time they had met, CJ had handcuffed himself to a bike rack outside Agatha Krusty's bakery. He was convinced they were hiding something in the pies. He'd lost the key to his handcuffs, so I picked the lock for him. They had been friends ever since. CJ couldn't have killed the Dean. All the evidence is right here. <laughs> How can I prove CJ is innocent? CJ was photographed in Avocado Heights at 3.55 p.m. on Thursday, two minutes before the Dean died. There's no way CJ could have killed him. You're innocent! What a relief! But you really shouldn't be going around town terrorizing children. You're going to end up in jail again. That wouldn't be so bad. They have the best beds in town. Every part of my being is telling me that my mom is being framed. But I don't understand why. There are only three reasons a man is murdered. He didn't mind his own business. He couldn't keep his mouth shut. Or he wouldn't keep his hands to himself. Have you ever heard of a place called Widow's Drop? I think my mom met the Dean there. Widow's Drop! No, but it sounds suspicious. Well, anything sounds suspicious if you say it like that. Be careful, Jenny. They'll do anything to keep their secrets. Once you start to see things, there's no going back. Do you ever wonder why the lake glows at night? Or why the power keeps going out all over town? Yes, I do. All the time. There's a lot more to this town if you look below the surface. Do you mean that literally or figuratively? Yes. The truth is hiding right under our feet if we only stop to look. <sighs> I'm more confused than when we started. Well, I really have to get to my house. This case won't solve itself. I can drop you off at the bridge. No need. I'm staying here. Some of these rocks have moved. Never trust a crab with a man's job. Be careful, Jenny. They are everywhere. Always watching. Don't worry about me, CJ. They'll never see me coming. I sneak in silence. I creep in the shadows. My footsteps are whispers. Damn it! I've got this. Don't worry. That'll buff out. Jenny headed east towards the Almost Done Bridge. I can dock there and make my way through the Forgotten Forest without anyone seeing me. Sneaky.
the way to my house. Night was still and quiet on the far side of the lake. No one ever comes down here, not since they stopped repairing the bridge. And yet it was hard to shake the feeling of being watched. This is CJ's fault. He really believes all that stuff. Once you start to see things, there's no going back. I wonder what he meant by that. Forgotten Forest Trail. Voted most likely place to be eaten by bears. Arthurton Gazette. Perfect. Just as I'm about to enter the spooky woods. The good folks at Arthurton Power and Light were not easing Jenny's fear of the dark. Of course, this was the very reason curfew had been put in place. It looked like Jenny had reached a dead end. She had no choice but to return to Susie's house for a comforting mug of hot chocolate. I'd rather plummet to my death. It was a terrifying drop to the rocks below. Surely she wasn't contemplating jumping across. Mom always says a great detective takes calculated risks. So let's do the math. The bridge is too weak for a running jump. Taking into account the strong tailwind, and factoring in my athletic prowess, or lack thereof, I could make that jump two out of three times. Not bad odds. Terrible odds. Well, here goes nothing. Uh-oh.
Okay, maybe the odds weren't so good. And now she was dangling from a splintered plank one slip away from certain death. It's just like climbing a tree. Just don't look down. Don't look down. Was this the end for our tiny hero? As her spindly muscles began to give way, an image flashed before Jenny's eyes. Her mother, dangling from a ledge, unable to pull herself to safety. How could she possibly save her family when she couldn't even save herself? I can't give up now. Mom needs me. <sighs> Jenny had barely survived. Was she really prepared for the dangers that lay ahead? It's too late to turn back now. It might have been her recent brush with death, but Jenny's heart was pounding in her chest. That's not my heart. That's... CJ's compass! The needle is shaking like crazy!
this? Another postcard piece. Curious. Is this what the compass was pointing to? Jenny paused for a moment and listened. It was quiet, but distinct. A constant pulse. Mechanical, unnatural. Man-made? But other than the sound it emitted, this rock was like any other in the forest. Something under there. Jenny had spent her whole childhood exploring the woods behind her house. But I've never seen this before. Then she remembered CJ's words. People don't see things they aren't looking for. She knocked on the rusty metal. Hollow, it's a trap door.
What a strange device. The wires are connected to the door. metallic odor filled the air as Jenny peered into the opening. It sure is dark down there. Too dark. But I can't just leave this unexplored. I have to see where it leads. And so Jenny descended blindly into the unknown. Good. In all her short life, Jenny LeClue had never found herself in such a peculiar place. The town that once seemed a small lifeless pond was suddenly an ocean of mysterious possibilities. Equal parts terrifying and intriguing, it was... Incredible! Yes. An incredible mystery in her very own backyard. Looks fancy and broken. Jenny wiped away a thick layer of dust. <coughs> Jeez, how long has this been here? Clearly the equipment had laid dormant for a long time, and yet... It's so... futuristic. Straight out of those comics Keith is always reading. Starship cadets and the race for space. It feels... Alien. <sighs> now I'm starting to sound like CJ. There must be a logical explanation for all this. But its purpose would remain a mystery. Jenny dared not touch its intricate interface. I'll just press all the buttons and see what happens. Oh dear. Jenny turned the dials, she heard something hidden in the static. A voice! 
What is he saying? It's a pattern. It keeps repeating. Animals in numbers. Animals in numbers. People in the future sure talk weird. Was it a cry for help? A shopping list? Someone with extremely limited vocabulary? Whatever it is, it must be important. And so she transcribed it in her journal. There's something stuck to the bottom of the ladder. It was just a blank piece of paper. Or is it? Jenny traced her finger over the page. She felt the clear indentations left by a pen. I know exactly what to do. It worked. One, two, three, four. It was a code of some kind. The world's least secure code. Please enter authorization code to begin. One, two, three, four. Code accepted. System authorized and on for activation. Sphere hermetically sealed. Transducer coils targeting. Rotation phase hyperlinks stabilized. Sequencing experiment page module 37. What's happening? Radioactive safety margins cleared. Running at 54% efficiency. It says it's working. But what's it doing? Remember, a healthy employee is an effective employee. Please leave the station for your mandatory 15-minute smoking break. Decompressing spherical chamber. I should get out of here before my skin melts off. Boulders must have weighed a ton each, yet they floated in the air like balloons. <gasps> CJ said he saw a swarm of UFOs circling the Forgotten Forest. Was Jenny beginning to make sense of CJ's wild ramblings? I'm gonna need a bucket of coffee to unpack all this. like much, but this treehouse had once been Jenny and Keith's favorite hiding spot. I could never climb up there on my own. Keith always had to help me. They schemed and planned and swore never to let anything come between them. Just thinking about him hurt. What was that? Steven! 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 What? Did you hear that? I'm telling you, man. Not this again. Something's out here. Something big. Real big. There's nothing there. But I'm getting some super spooky vibes, man. 
For the last time, Kevin, the radios are for emergencies only. That was lucky. I need to be more careful. The house was swarming with police, but she knew this place like the back of her hand. If anyone could find a way in, it was Jenny LeClue. It's tempting. But Jenny couldn't risk being seen by the police. There's probably a sneakier way in. Jenny recalled the Christmas Eve when she had climbed down the chimney and discovered how difficult the jolly old man's job was. And dirty. There's definitely a cleaner way in. That's Mom's room. The window looked a promising point of entry. I could climb the tree up onto the roof. But as Jenny knew, all the windows on the second floor were bolted down. Dad did it after a raccoon got in and trashed the place. My room. And inside. My detective gear. But unfortunately, this window was also bolted shut. Not going in that way. What could the police have found inside her house? And if they found what they're looking for, why are they still here? I carved that jack-o'-lantern. How normal life had seemed just days ago. For a moment, she missed that life. There'll be plenty of time to carve pumpkins once I've saved my mom. Dang, they've got the back door covered, too. Out of the police's line of sight, the basement was her best entry point into the house. Except that window is locked, and all my lock-picking gear is inside. The window was ajar. The frame damaged. Somebody broke into my house. That's my job. But who? The police had used the front door. Whoever it was, that's my way in. To get to the basement window, Jenny would have to creep carefully past the police officer. One false move and the game would be up. Hey! Who goes there? Caught! Jenny would have to think fast or risk being jailed like her mother. Here goes nothing. Uh... Steven! Please tell me you're there! What's up, buddy? I think you should know, and I say this with 100% certainty, that there's a... Spit it out already. There's a mountain lion out here! Very likely. They're indigenous to this area. What?! Just don't let it eat you. I don't need any more paperwork. Oh god. I think I'll just, uh, head inside for a minute to, uh, to, to check on something. That was close.
Someone definitely forced this open. Would Jenny enter the dark basement? It was an odd feeling, breaking into her own house. But as she squeezed through the basement window, Jenny felt a rush of excitement. I could get used to this, she thought. Jenny was in, undetected. Home sweet home. What the heck? Who left this here? Jenny's father had never carried a briefcase, and her mother couldn't afford one. Let's see who this belongs to. Who carries around a fancy briefcase with a children's book inside? The Hawk and the Weasel. Hang on a second. Jenny recognized the book. She'd seen a copy of it next to the Dean's lifeless body. In the library! There must be something significant about it. Familiar? Like I've seen it before. Wait, no! I've heard it before! On the radio in the underground lab! Could there be a connection between the cryptic radio message and this book? Let's find out.
Soon they will all listen, relive their rancid past. The message read like a threat. But from who? Could it be a message from the Dean's killer? Let me get this straight. Someone's broadcasting a sinister message in code, which is being picked up on a radio in an abandoned laboratory hidden in the forest. And a secret to decode this message is written in a children's book, which was locked inside a stranger's briefcase in my basement. All of this was true. That doesn't make it any less crazy sounding. But not all mysteries could be solved in an instant. Sometimes questions had to percolate, like a good cup of coffee. Only then would the answers become clear. I guess I'll let it brew for a bit. But right now, I need to get to my room and find my detective gear. Oh crap! Hey! What are you doing? Nothing. Just looking for more beer. make yourselves at home, why don't you? Forget about it! There's more in the back of the fridge! They better not eat my cookies. Jackpot! <laughs> they got cookies, too! Hey, have we searched down here yet? You lose one game of cards and suddenly you want to search the house! Can't handle the pressure, eh? Oh, those, sir, are fighting words. You want to put your money where your mouth is? Arthurton's finest, everyone. There was no way Jenny could reach her bedroom without being caught by the police. Which means I can't get my detective gear. Great. But this was a basement. A veritable treasure trove of old possessions. Surely something around here would prove useful? Maybe. But I can't see a thing. Let's shed some light on the situation. Of course the fuse is missing for the lights. Jenny wasn't prone to sentimentality, but seeing her father's desk, the disorganized muddle of books, photos, and the faint smell of ammonia, all remind us that her dad was here not so long ago. Miss you, Dad. This one test tube looks recently used. The others are all covered in dust. A small puddle of liquid had pooled on the desk. Looks fresh. Still sticky. A field guide to fascinating flora. Written by Weiss, Felding, and... Strausberry? Did the Dean write this book? Years ago, I looked like a kid. One of the rare times that Dad wasn't making a goofy face. He used to say, serious people make serious mistakes. Quantum tunneling and adaptive spectral optics. Sounds like a real page turner. Dad was such a nerd.
Mending the molecular bonds of marriage. Mom and Dad both worked an awful lot. Jenny rarely saw the two of them together. day of dad's accident. Mom must have kept it. Dean called the lab explosion an accident, but everyone in town seemed to blame Dad. inspections report. I've never seen this before. This contradicts the newspaper article which stated my dad made a mistake. Everyone in town blamed him for the accident. But they were all wrong. The lab was unsafe. He shouldn't have been working there. October 5th. That was one week before. Her father's accident. The Dean signed the report. Someone had circled the signature in red pen. He must have known that the lab was unsafe, but still let my dad work in there? Any rational mind could see it. Strong evidence linking her mom to the Dean's death. This doesn't prove anything. But it was a clear motive for murder. Revenge. My mom wouldn't do that. But who else would see it that way? There must be an explanation. I just don't know what it is yet. Jenny did the right thing and left everything as she had found it. Her mother would be proud, but would she be grateful? Mom's innocent, so she has nothing to hide. But how would it look if the police found this evidence? I'll just have to solve the case before they do. Fuse. And then there was light. Jenny would need to work quickly to remain undetected. Who knows when they'll come back? Now, where's the most likely place to find a makeshift detective kit? A 
shaft of light peeked through the boxes. There's more stuff back there. I just need a way through. Jenny's instincts had been correct. Dozens of boxes lined the back wall of the basement. There's probably something useful here, but it'll take forever to search through them all. CSI supplies. That must be Mom's old gear. Not as good as mine, but at least it works. More or less. My key to the city. 